Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Haller thanking you for taking the time to observe this video that is brought to you rightly divided. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking the time to observe this video today. And also all of you that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. A heartfelt thank you. Today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen, the most evil man of the 20th century. Now, it's I would like to have brought in that he was more evil than his predecessors, dating all the way back to the 15th century even, and before that. But I want to concentrate on the 20th century because that's when this man was on this earth and was such a great enemy to billions with a B of people. He was born in 1918 in these United States and he died in 2018 in these United States, almost making 100 years old. Now, this man isn't who you think it is, although he has paved the way for many evil ones to follow after him. When you talk about the 20th century, you might think about, I already give it away that he's from the United States, but you could say this man is more evil than Hitler was. Uh, he was more evil than Joseph Stalin was, or from Russia, Mussolini from Italy. Uh, even uh, Mao from China, all the great dictators uh, that were of the world prior, even dating back to someone as vicious as Napoleon, uh, and in the Mongolian Genghis Khan, uh, all these that slaughtered millions of people. Well, how can this man rank above them <clears throat> as actually the most evil person of the 20th century. Even more evil than those of the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Well, it has to do with a different way that this man was evil. What he stood for, what he represented, what he taught, and the way he led people astray. We're talking about none other than what the world esteemed him to be the greatest evangelist of the 20th century. I'm here to tell you he was the most evil man of the 20th century. Now that's quite a difference, isn't it? Going from one extreme to the other. Because this man became very, very wealthy and at one point in his ministry, he was the richest evangelical preacher in his country. And this is none other than Billy Graham. Now, why expose Billy Graham? Because the truth has to be told. Because it's been covered up. It's been watered down, twisted and perverted all these years. When you have to look at what he stood for, what he taught, what he preached, what he became, and the billions of people that he led astray. Now, this man was known worldwide. He made his money, most of it, ladies and gentlemen, doing crusades, filling stadiums with people. That's where he made most of his money. But he later made his money on books, television appearances, radio stations, estate properties. So uh, when he died, he was worth over $25 million, which in today's standard brings him only up to number eight on the list of the most richest evangelical preachers. But he set the tone for the rest of them to gain such prosperity, however they went about doing it. He laid the foundation for that. Uh, became a very wealthy, rich, rich man off of what? Preaching Jesus Christ, supposedly, of Scripture. 
And that's where Billy Graham, not only is the most evil man of the 20th century, he was one of the most greatest false teachers of the 20th century because of what he taught. He started out as, in a, as a Reformed Presbyterian, later became baptized into the Southern Baptist denomination, and then became a preacher uh, to that. He must have saw something of the Southern Baptist uh, denomination that was appealing to him, and I'm sure it had something to do with financial gain. So he went on these national, worldwide crusades, drawing hundreds of thousands of people at a time. It's estimated, according to Wikipedia, but I don't believe Wikipedia, that he preached over 275 million people worldwide. It's much, much larger than that, ladies and gentlemen. He had influence with every major leader in this world, be it governmental, military, religious. He was in bed with all of them. They sought his, I don't know if his advice, but what his thoughts were on things, what his perspective was, and how they could help be helped by what Billy Graham thought he could help them with. Because he was held in very high esteem by mankind in this world as a religious leader. But he was also a very successful religious leader. I can't emphasize that enough. Because what makes him one of the worst enemies of mankind in the 20th century and one of the most evil men is because of what he did and what his actions, his ramifications, what he stood for is going to have an effect on people in the long run. For eternity. See, that's what ranks him above all of those leaders that were political dictators or whatever, kings before him, who slaughtered millions of people. They slaughtered millions of people in the flesh. Not Billy Graham. I don't think Billy Graham was ever accused of killing anyone in the flesh. But what did he do to the billions of people that listened to him, that followed him? Getting the false hope that Billy Graham taught, by the way, for salvation. How many billions of people did he lead to their death? Not in a physical sense, of course not, but in the spiritual realm. Billions, ladies and gentlemen, and that is on Billy Graham himself. Yet today even, it's being so watered down that he is still, his name is still revered in the realm of Christianity. He took the religion of Christianity. He took the term evangelical and evangelism to a whole different level with his way of teaching. He was very charismatic. He was very uh, a good speaker, uh, very persuasive. And those are attributes that will draw people. And he would fill the stadiums. There'd be standing room only. He sold his books. He sold his very popular on television, very popular on radio. And of course, he had a lot of wealth in real estate, which is very interesting. But you see, he taught the Jesus Christ of Christianity. Oh, he claimed to teach it of the Bible, which they all do, see. But he was of his religion of Christianity, which motivated him to do what it is he did. And I'm sure somewhere in his finite mind and finite wisdom, it was okay for him to rationalize it, that he could be very successful and very rich at what he did, and still be a servant of the living God. In fact, he didn't mind when people told him he was a man of God because they held him in such high esteem. And it's interesting because I'm going to give you some references from Scripture that are from the Old Testament, really from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that they actually complement who Billy Graham really was. Even though, because Billy Graham taught Scripture under both the law and grace. That was one of his trademarks. He went all over in scripture. He even promoted, if you will, the pagan holiday of Christmas. And he preached on that. There's many things. I don't think there's anything he didn't preach on or have a, sem a sermon on or have a crusade on. And he preached a false message. He preached a false salvation message. That's another thing. And that's key. And that's worse of all of them that he preached was the false uh, salvation message. But let me show you from scripture first of why Billy Graham was and is the most evil person or evil man of the 20th century. Because if you look in the book of uh, Matthew, 
we'll start there because Jesus was telling uh, his disciples when he talked about his passion and what was going to happen to him. This is what he said. He was telling them this, and this uh, exemplifies Billy Graham to a T. In verse 25, he was telling his uh, 12 apostles, for whoever, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And here's verse 26. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, Billy Graham gave up his soul for the acceptance of the world, to be a world leader in religion, to be world renowned, to be highly esteemed by every religious leader of the world. All the military leaders and all the governmental officials and leaders of countries adored this man and listened to this man and held him at high esteem and asked all the time for his guidance. So what does that tell you? You don't get that way by preaching and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ in Paul's gospel that it was given to Paul by the preaching of Jesus Christ himself where we are saved by grace through faith in the revelation of the mystery which is from Romans through Philemon for our salvation today in the dispensation of the grace of God which is the doctrine for the body of Christ church you're not going to become esteemed of the world you're going to become an enemy of the world a total opposite reaction and position of what Billy Graham held he was an enemy to anybody of the world. He was a friend to the world. He was an antichrist to the world because he taught the Jesus Christ of his Christianity. So we know this. What did a man profit? What did Billy Graham profit? Well, he profited being worldly known, held in high esteem, recognized wherever he went in the world, became very, very wealthy, and lived a lavish lifestyle. While he was on this earth. What will a man give? For his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Look at the life of Billy Graham. Now let's look at another place. Let's go to the book of Luke. Again this is in the Old Testament of Jesus Christ's Gospels. Of the kingdom message under the law. Jesus said something interesting. That I think also exemplifies who Billy Graham was. He's talking to his disciples and he was also talking to the Pharisees. And he was giving them a little lesson. But in, we're going to open up in chapter 16 of Luke, verse 15. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. He flooded the airways. He was so popular. And he lied and led so many people with false teachings and wrong doctrine. He became so high esteemed among men. What was he in the sight of God? An abomination. No Christian today of any denomination, majority of them anyway, that call themselves Christians, that believe in Christianity, that part of the Christianity religion, would ever say that about Billy Graham. Very few do. Those of us that are rightly dividers, that are saved by grace through faith, absolutely will call him out for what he was. He was the worst enemy of mankind of the 20th century. You see, Billy Graham taught a feel-good theology of his Christianity. He went after the emotions of people. He used different things in his crusades. He would have music of all kinds. He would have testimonies. He would have people tugging at the hearts of others. And he would give a robust speech telling people why they need to have Jesus Christ in their life. If he would have just went with the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the grace of God and the dispensation of the grace of God, the finished work of the cross of the revelation of the mystery, he would have been all right. But no, he brought something on that wasn't even biblical. He 
went on with what Southern Baptists used, but it's used in other denominations too, something called an altar call. You want to give your life to Jesus. He was all about giving your life to Jesus. Surrendering. Opening your heart. All these cliches he used to tug at people's emotions. His greatest of all was the altar call. He would call thousands during his crusade, wherever city he was in, to come up and have an altar call and give his life to Jesus Christ. And people would flock by the thousands, line up to do that in public so everybody would know that they're doing this. But it was very clever on Billy Graham's part because he also had people register who they were, where they were, so they could get on a mailing list to send him money to further his crusades for the gospel of Jesus Christ, of course. But that was one of it. Come on, lay your sins at the altar. Give your life to Jesus Christ. That was his message for salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, you find that in Scripture, first of all. You'll find it in the uh, religion of Christianity. Oh, you bet you will. You won't find it in Scripture. That's not how you have salvation today. It is a total false salvation message. Leading people astray. And what was he doing? Do you remember what we read in Ephesians chapter 14? I think it's verse 14, actually. Let's go look at it. Because this is Billy Graham, again, totally exposed. Chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 14. And this is what it says. Though that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Billy Graham was one of the most crafty, cunning men out there. Very subtle, very powerful, yet he lied in wait. He would lie in wait to deceive you, and that's what he did with his crusades. People by the thousands came up and received a false hope, a false message, a false salvation leaving there thinking they are going to be in heaven because that's what this false teacher, Billy Graham, preached. And it was held in high esteem. It is even today, unfortunately. Billy Graham was no different than any other Christian of Christianity that is of today. Billy Graham, since the day he was born to the day he died, was lost because he did not believe. The gospel of Jesus Christ according to the grace of God where you say by grace through faith and the revelation of the mystery, was kept hidden from Billy Graham because his mind was blinded by Satan, because Jesus Christ could not shine his light into uh, Billy Graham to open his heart. It couldn't happen. It couldn't unblind his mind because Satan held him captive at his own will, and God never gave him over to repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth because he lived his life opposing himself against God and despising God, the true God of Scripture, Jesus Christ, and promoting the Jesus Christ of his Christianity, who was Satan all along. You know, people always talked about in religion, especially in Christianity, they say, well, God raises up certain men to be great in certain times of centuries that uh, make a difference. You know, they always refer to, well, look at Martin Luther. You know, look at uh, Charles Darwin. Look at all these people that have an influence on uh, the world, are chosen by God. And people have said that's that's what was that's what happened to Billy Graham. Well, if you line up scripture and you look at his teachings and what he stood for and what he became, the minute he was born, he was born under sin, under a lie, and Satan had him from day one. He was put on this earth to serve Satan and to spread a false religion, the traditions of men, a false salvation message. Can you imagine Billy Graham, the minute he took his last breath and all of this was shown to him, you think Paul went through a devastating time those three days or so that he was blinded and did not eat and everything that he did wrong was shown to him when he was in a trance and praying? Billy Graham went through a hell of a lot worse the minute he took his last breath. Because where is Billy Graham today? According to Scripture now, if you line it up with Scripture, what he did, what he stood for, and who he was, there is no way what he preached and taught 
was totally opposite of where he ended up. I'm not judging him. Scripture is. I can't tell you whether he's in heaven or not, but Scripture sure can. Scripture says he's not. Scripture says he's in hell, waiting on the great white throne judgment, being cast in the lake of fire forever. Billy Graham, the man of God, the greatest evangelist of the 20th century, is in hell. You'll never admit that. You won't publicly say that. You won't expose him for who he really was. Because you're a Christian of Christianity, see? You have followed what Billy Graham has taught in one way, shape, or form or another. I don't care what denomination you belong to today, what church you go to, his influence is still there. And that's the danger. That's what made him so evil because he never stopped doing it. Why do you think he did what it is he did? He had a love for money. He had a love for fame. He had a love for power. Greed. He was totally a covetous person. And he saw what might be available to him if he just preached the word, the way to make a profit. And yet all of his teachings, all of his crusades, all of his books, everything that he ever uttered out of that mouth of his were words of no profit. They were vain babbling. And the 99 years that he was on this earth, it never changed. Because later on in his life, he even accepted the gay movement. He accepted gay marriage. He didn't judge anybody. He didn't condone anything or condemn it, he condoned it. He condoned everything that was happening in the world in the changes that were radically happening within the realm of Christianity. Is that what you do too? And many churches have gone that route. Many denominations have gone that route. They're following exactly what this man followed until his death. That makes him, absolutely, without a doubt, not the most influential not the most highly esteemed, not the most popular, not the most richest, not the most successful, and not the most loved evangelical preacher of the 20th century. It makes him the most evil man of the 20th century because he is going to be held responsible and is already being held responsible for the billions of people that he led astray according to his false teaching, his false ministry, his false religion, based on all of his lies that he got from Satan. Because the deeper he got into his ministry, the deeper he got into his evangelism, the worse it became. Because he started having influence on the whole world. You know, you got to think about it. If he's, he, he was called on for, by the Pope. He's called on by all the major religious leaders of the world. He was called on by all the national leaders of the countries of this world. Nations, leaders of nations called upon this man to help get guidance. It's no difference that he was called on by the presidents of the United States, how many. Everyone that he was a president during his lifetime, he was called upon to give guidance to. Him because they respected him. They held him in high esteem. They didn't hold him in high esteem because he was an authority in the word of God. They held him in high esteem of how he looked to the population of the world, how he was accepted of the world, how he was looked upon as the world, as a very successful man, doing what it is he did because he was very good at what he did. And it brought him prosperity. It brought him fame. It brought him fortune. He gave up his soul to gain the whole world. And it worked very well for him up until he took his last breath. Because the minute he was born, he came in this world with nothing. And he knew he was going out with nothing, but he was going to make every bit of it count to what he could gain while he was on this earth in the flesh. Billy Graham was all of the flesh. Because if he wasn't, he wouldn't have taught you a false salvation message that he claims is of the Spirit. He would not have done that. He would have rightly divided the word of truth. He would have told you the truth. And he would have become your enemy because he told you the truth rather than become your beloved world pastor, as he sometimes was referred to. That's the difference, and that separates someone like Billy Graham 
from those of us that are rightly dividers, who rightly divide the word of truth, and speak the truth, and become your enemy, and expose them. I'm, I'm reproving Billy Graham, and everything that I've shown so far, he is a liar in all of them, because they're not in Scripture. Because what does it say in uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6? Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Everything that Billy Graham taught for salvation was not based on Scripture. It was all something he added. And if he added it, it's been shown to you now through Scripture that the Word of God reproved him, and he was a liar from the very beginning. He was of his father, the devil. There's many in this world today that are of their father, the devil, but you'll never know it. They don't even know it. Billy Graham didn't even really know it, because I'll tell you something else. God knew his heart, regardless of what Billy Graham was teaching and preaching and living and acquiring of the materialistic things of this world to include fame and fortune. He knew the heart of Billy Graham. And he knew that Billy Graham was held high esteem by men of this world. And that, my friends, is total abomination in the sight of God. But you see, in this age of grace, God will allow these people to continue. And Billy Graham was allowed to do what it is he did. Because Satan is the God of this world. He has control of this world. I get a kick out of Christians. I get a kick out of these religious people. Oh boy, don't take any worries. God's still in total control. Don't they realize that Jesus Christ gave the title of the earth to Satan? He'll redeem it again. He'll take it back. But not yet. Satan is going to have his chance to destroy whatever he can of this world. Because he himself is already destroyed. He has already conquered. He has already been defeated. But he doesn't want you to know that. And as long as we're in this age of grace where Jesus Christ does not punish you for anything, he'll get away with it. He'll be allowed to do it. He will be allowed to bring up people like Billy Graham and tutor Billy Graham and refine him to one of his greatest disciples of the century that he lived in. And that's what happened to Billy Graham. He became a disciple of Satan. He became one of those ministers that was transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Who in the name of everything is decent is going to stand up and say, Billy Graham, you're a disciple of Satan. You are your father of the devil. There ain't nobody out there in the world of Christianity that's going to do that and claim to be a Christian. It's only those of us that aren't Christians. There are only ones of us that expose the reality of the lies, of the hypocrisies, and of the false religion that Christianity really is, and who is behind this Christianity, which is Satan. You look to the scriptures that we read. It shows you who Billy Graham was, according to the works of who? Not according to the works of Jesus Christ of scripture, but according to the works of the Jesus Christ of his Christianity, who is really Satan in disguise. Cleverly hidden, you see, that's what made Billy Graham so successful. He had the backing of Satan. And Satan's all of this world. And look at Billy Graham. He became very, very successful. In fact, he paved the way for evangel evangelical preachers to become very, very rich. He was one of the first ones that tapped into that industry. People don't realize that. At one time, he was the richest evangelical preacher in this world. And it didn't stop him. He continued to grow in prosperity because he taught a false salvation message. That's the worst thing Billy Graham will be held accountable for. Not teaching the truth of Scripture that they might be saved. See, he didn't do that. He preached what he wanted them to hear that would make him prosper, would make him popular, would make him be held in high esteem would make him known throughout the whole world that he gained through his ministry of so-called righteousness, which was all along a ministry of Satan himself. That's who Billy Graham is, and that's why Billy Graham is the most dangerous man of the 20th century. And look how many people have followed him unto their death, their total destruction. They're in hell waiting on the white, great, great white throne judgment, and to be cast in the lake of fire also, because they followed the charlatan called Billy Graham, who was a disciple of Satan. 
But it's too late for them, see, but it's not too late for you. If you're a Christian of Christianity and you follow what Billy Graham has taught and what has implemented within your Christianity, and he's in, he has uh, permeated all forms of Christianity of this world, bar none, you can escape that. You can be freed from that because you're not being held by Billy Graham in any bondage. You're being held by Satan in the bond of Satan at his will. Because your minds are blinded. You can be freed from all this by just believing the gospel, the true gospel that can bring you true salvation. That you will learn to love the truth, that you might be saved. There's no altar call. Don't listen to somebody like Billy Graham. Listen to what Jesus Christ says in Scripture. And he gives you that gospel. To Paul's writing, in the revelation of the mystery now, which is the doctrine for the body of Christ's church, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in, that is found in the revelation of the mystery, which is teaching of Jesus Christ, preaching of his own to Paul to teach you and me today from Romans to Philemon. You find that gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now you believe that by grace through faith. You don't believe it by doing an altar call by the charlatan and the false teacher and the disciple of Satan that Billy Graham taught. You believe it by grace through faith because that's what Jesus Christ taught Paul to give to you and me in his writings today. Because in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, an altar call is a cliche, is a works, is a false teaching, a false doctrine, which leads to a false salvation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your listening. It's a home Bible study. From my home to your home. This is Robert Holler, the Rightly Divider, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, until next time.